How are you guys doing? Chris Ignato here, and you are watching Nature Now. So you know what? It's mid-October right now, and over the past couple of weeks, I've been noticing tons and tons of different types of seeds and nuts and their dispersal mechanisms. So the original name for fall used to actually be called harvest. And what better time of year than to start talking about some of these different seed dispersal mechanisms that you might be seeing. Let's get started. So to get started, there's actually a type of seed distributor that I think a lot of people don't think of. Those are insects and ants, and I have to mention them. Many ants will collect different seeds, carry them off into their colonies beneath the ground. Obviously, a lot of ants might actually forget about the seeds they bring underneath the ground, or they store them somewhere else. You mix that with some water, and the seed sprouts. The seeds are planted by the insects. Kind of cool. You've got acorns, walnuts, hickory nuts, beech nuts, and all sorts of others. The obvious dispersal mechanisms for them are animals, things like squirrels and stuff. They'll collect a bunch of them, they'll find little areas to hide and store them for the winter, but they often forget about them. And of course what happens? They grow into trees come spring. Okay, sorry about the sunglasses. Sunny time. But just so you know, these acorn caps make a fine whistle that you can blow. Check it out. So you take this, you make a bit of a V part right here, okay? And then you rest your lip along your uh, knuckle, as I'll show you, like this. See, it works that good. The helicopter's already on its way. Another form of seed dispersal is, of course, my favorite. You've got things that pop out when you touch them. Things like jewelweed, in fact, the other name for it is touch me not, because once you touch these things, the pods, they just burst and the seeds go flying in all directions. Another one that's very common is called jump seed, also known as Virginia knotweed. These are a lot of fun, check it out. This is an awkward position, the things we do. So this is another type of seed dispersal mechanism. Some people call this plant Johnny Jump Up. Correction, Christopher. That is Jump Seed, you fool. Johnny Jump Up belongs to the old family, which include pansies. I tell ya, it never ends. And it has a, a seed dispersal rather similar to that of jewelweed or touch-me-nots. And when, uh, when they're ready, you just touch these things and the seeds go flying. How cool is that? Oh, in my eye! The things we do! So you might be watching this video and thinking, Chris, there's a method you haven't even mentioned yet. Well, I was doing that on purpose. That happens to be one of the oldest forces in nature. That, of course, is the wind. And there are tons of plants that rely on the wind to carry their seeds away. There's a certain plant you learn at a very early age that we all know. And that, of course, is the dandelion, also known as wishes. When the seeds are nice and ready, they'll dry out, they grow these little white fluffy things that act as parachutes for the wind to catch, pluck them off the flower, and carry them way off into the skies. But those aren't the only plants that rely on the wind to spread their seeds. You've got bone sets, golden rods, cattails, which are staple plants found in wetlands and ponds across the planet, and even dog banes, which are a lot of fun to help disperse those seeds. Another mechanism that many plants use to distribute their seeds is kind of like the nature's equivalent of Velcro. If you look closely at seeds such as burdocks, you'll notice tons of tiny little hooks on them. Those hooks are designed to stick to things like fur. Of course, they will stick to your clothes and hair if you're walking through a field or a transitional area. Say a deer walks by a burdock plant and that seed sticks to its fur, that deer might walk on maybe even a mile or two away. If that seed falls off into favorable conditions, the plant's going to grow there. But there are many other plants that do the same thing. These are pretty cool. These are actually sweet gum seed pods. The way these are designed to work is sometimes they actually stick between the hooves of deer as they're walking along. 
There are other ways these work too. They roll along the ground with the wind and stuff. And as these bird beak looking things open up, like these ones here, the seeds just drop out. These ones are empty for the most part. There's some seeds. See? Different seeds are coming out. These are all the different seeds. So these, these little things remind me of bird beaks. And then they open up like these ones here and here, and the seeds just drop out. Really cool and a lot of fun looking. These things are really cool and they're a lot of fun to take photos of, you know, with leaves and things because they're quite photogenic. Another very common and popular one during the fall are the pine cones. These aren't pine cones, these are hemlock cones, but they work in the same fashion. As you see, the green ones are still tightly closed, but as they dry, they open up and the seeds fall out. There are birds that will pry them open, and of course squirrels will eat them, and what they leave behind looks a little bit like a pineapple. Okay, okay, so I'm sure there's one more obvious dispersal mechanism that you naturalists out there are just waiting for me to bring up, so I'll do it, and that is by growing fruit. Say you got a plant that produces a delicious looking little raspberry at the end of its twigs and a bird, a mammal, or in some cases even a human comes by and sees it and can't resist the urge to pluck it off and eat it. Eventually it works its way through the digestive system and everything's burned away except for the seeds. And you know what happens next. They eventually get pooped out along with a little bit of fertilizer to help the plant on its way to producing a whole new generation of that species of plant. Okay, I said it. So those are pretty fun, aren't they? There are tons of different ways for seeds and nuts to spread themselves throughout the environment. And I just touched base on a few of them. I mean, I didn't even mention things like the maples that have those little hillcopters that tumble down from high up above, or the white ashes and the tulip poplars. There's just so many of them, and they're a ton of fun. In the future, I'm gonna try to have a few more videos on these things because why not? They're really cool. In the meantime, you know, maybe sample on some of those, not that I'm telling you to, but uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Once again, I'm Chris Ignato, signing out. Thanks a lot for watching, and remember, if you like this video, be sure to check out this video over here that YouTube has selected specifically for you based on your watch time. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, but you gotta click the bell icon, because if you don't, YouTube will never let you know when a new video of mine comes out. And remember, passion inspire spirit.